seen in England. And so Justin Broderick, Napalm Death, and that whole scene. So, But you like a lot of these bands, do you not? I do. I do well until a certain point on this chart. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, that's where I come in. Yeah, so. exactly. So we'll, 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 we'll do our best. <laughs> For sure. Hey there, everyone. It's Sam Dunn in the Banger Bar at Banger Films, and welcome to the new episode of Lock Horns, where live each week we debate a subgenre on the heavy metal family tree, which we created over 10 years ago for our first film, Metal A Headbanger's Journey. I want to remind everyone out there that if you like what you're seeing today, Tomorrow, in the future, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can eventually turn Banger TV into a full-fledged channel. This week, we're tackling industrial metal. There's a lot of opinions out there. We've had a lot of discussion already going on about this subgenre. And to help me, because I know little to nothing about industrial metal, is Lisa Latasur. Hi. Welcome, Lisa. Should we lock horns or we something? We should lock horns or something <laughs> like that. Lisa is a <laughs> colleague... Uh, here at Banger TV, she is usually off screen, ringing the bell. Uh, she's worked with us for many years at Banger, and she is a industrial metal fan and expert in her own right. So they say. That's right. Yes. So instead of Lisa, we have Sam Sutherland this week off camera, ringing the bell. Beautiful. Thank you, Sam. The key thing to lock horns is that you have the opportunity to have your say. We're going to be tackling industrial metal, and we want to know what you like about the, the, the chart as it is, what bands should be added, what bands should be removed, and if you've tuned in to previous episodes, you know that at the end, we're all going to attempt to come to some sort of consensus and add a band or two or three to the chart. So it's key that you guys let us know what you think about the, the chart as it is right now. Let's get to it. Lisa. Yes. Let's talk about ex industrial metal. What do you think makes industrial metal industrial metal? Well, I think you have to first explain that there's a difference between industrial music and industrial metal music. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that this is actually not a subgenre of metal, but a subgenre of industrial. And uh, I feel like I need to say that I made my own version of this chart a few years ago when I wrote this book which I've brought in. Uh, it's my encyclopedia of goth, and I made a goth band family tree, and I made an industrial one. And down here, I tried to make industrial metal. And uh, I put Marilyn Manson on here, an orgy, you know, which really just proves that uh, this is harder than it looks. <laughs> but I did put some bands on there that are missing, so I'm excited to talk about those. But I think we have to recognize that industrial is an entire genre mm -hmm. unto itself that really doesn't have very much to do with metal. Mm -hmm. You know, it came yeah. out of like art music and noise music and mm -hmm. punk rock and new mm -hmm. wave mm -hmm. and electronic music mm -hmm. and only really started to be metal in the late 80s and early 90s, which right. brings us up to this chart. So right. I see a lot of people on the chat talking about Throbbing Gristle and about Neubotten and I'd love to talk about those all day, but I think we've got to move on to where industrial meets guitars. For sure, and yeah. I think we've talked about that already, that in order to qualify as being industrial metal, perhaps we need to stake the claim that it needs to have guitar right. yeah. as one of the central sonic elements of the sound, because after all, everything on our heavy metal tree is united by the guitar. It is. Yeah. Yes. And tempos, I think, are another right. thing we've been talking about that... Generally, you've got that sort of standard, dare I say, dance-friendly uh, tempo that runs through most of industrial metal, which is probably why uh, there's such polarizing opinions about this genre. People love it, people hate it. <laughs> I've seen you at a lot of metal shows, and I've never seen you stomping. It's so. not going to happen. <laughs> not today, not ever. Um, what about lyrically? Um, what do you think... Is there anything that unifies these bands or most of them lyrically? I think that industrial in a lot of ways, um, sonically and lyrically, is about this man versus machine mm -hmm. theme. Yep. And so to me, the lyrics are generally dystopian. Mm -hmm. um, they are very much about power in the same way that a lot of other metal is, but from a different point of view, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, and uh, some of this has a lot of sort of like 
you know, sexual deviancy right. sometimes, yeah. uh, although not really uh, with too many of these bands, but... Uh, Certainly with this band. Yeah, and sometimes this band and this band, so <laughs> this may be the sexiest episode of Lock Horns Ooh, ever. I'm excited about I'm that. I'm counting on that. And vocally, too, I mean, maybe this is a bit of a stretch, but it seems like a lot of these bands have sort of like spoken word chanty like a, again it's about that robotic yeah. machine like samples? sound yeah samples yeah. right film yeah. samples other samples yeah. political rally samples yeah. yep. a lot of chanting you know sort of like military rhythms mm -hmm. uh, it's another thing rhythm over riff yep almost exclusively here yeah and um yeah, that's kind of what defines industrial metal for me. Excellent. Well, I'm just going to um, read a few of the comments that have been coming in about industrial metal and then maybe have you step in and sort okay. of give us your your early opinions on sort of bands that should go, bands that should be sure. added. Let's do it. Uh, Thomas Praskow, Facebook, says that Ministry and Godflesh are the quintessential industrial metal bands. All others are up for debate. Thank you, Thomas. Landon Shane Mayo, also from uh, Facebook, says, this is a bullshit-ass list. <laughs> Cut. No, joking. Uh, industrial is alternative music. There is nothing metal about it. Hmm. I don't know Landon, <laughs> thrown off the gloves early in the episode. Nathan Slabic. Slabich. Nine Inch Nails is industrial rock, not industrial metal. True. Orgy isn't music. Ooh. And shouldn't be considered for anything. Bump those bands include Swans, Pitch Shifter, Nail Bomb, and Prong. Uh, any early insights on any of that? Any anything you would you would agree with there, Lisa? Well, I would agree that Orgy oh, needs to go. Whoa. Like, I don't even want it on any Did part of the Did that just land chart. on the floor? <laughs> that is a first. I mean, COC came up in Doom and it got like there, <laughs> but it didn't make it all the way to the floor. That is a bold move. That is a bold Maybe move. Maybe when this chart was made in 2004, Orgy was somewhat relevant, but those days are gone. Okay, fair so enough. Is, so is the Magnet. What about Nine Inch Nails? What's your opinion, Lisa? This is one of my favorite bands mm -hmm. in the history of music. Yes. They're not metal. And why is that? They made one metal EP. Right. And that's it. Like, they're really just not a metal band. Not guitar-driven at the end of the day? Is that what it comes down to for you? Or not too many kilts? Not enough long hair? What does hey. it come down to? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> It's true, it's true. There are probably more kilts in here. Um, to me, they just don't connect to the other branches of, of the metal tree. Right, right. You know? Fair um, enough, fair enough. They belong in their own little question mark. In a and way, but... maybe the argument could be made that they, I mean, they probably... Have they influenced a lot of metal bands? I don't know. Well, they've influenced a lot of bands. Like right. to me, they're the quintessential industrial band. Okay. But yep. I really have a hard time putting them right. on a metal chart. I don't know what other people think about this. What about White Zombie? There's been a lot of chatter already. In fact, you did a online <laughs> poll did, prior to today's episode yeah. about uh, White Zombie. What's your thoughts? It's tricky. I think you could make a case for it against. I don't feel yeah. super strongly about it. Right. Um, we were talking before the show, and yeah. I agree with you that they belong here more than Rob Zombie does. Yeah. yeah. And um, at a certain time, yeah, they, you know, I've done a lot of stomping to this band. Indeed, and I and I I would I would agree with you there. I think once White Zombie became Rob Zombie, Rob seemed to gravitate more towards a more straightforward kind of girls in cars and just sort of straight ahead yeah. rock and roll vibe whereas in the early days white zombie uh had some uh, industrial elements yeah i think to so the sound. i think that's fair fair enough okay know. let's check in with what is going on yeah, on the happening. big screen here uh i th we've got mm. earthbound 92 i kind <laughs> of thought orgy would go but not like that whoa sorry that was bold sorry <laughs> Nine Inch Nails needs to stay in industrial metal. Here you go. You started. You started. Uh, you started something here. Sorry, I'm gonna. I'll fight you on that one. <laughs> I'll fight you on that one. And then under that, we've got uh, Shark Rusher 13. Nine Inch Nails is 90s metal, which means it isn't metal. There they, are some strong. They opinions. were also nominated for a Grammy for metal, right. which we know the Grammys don't know anything about metal. Right, right. So that just makes my case. To that point, I mean, yeah. The 90s was a period of searching, I think, in mm. metal. There were a lot of things going on where metal was grabbing from other sounds. Of course, that's when we got new metal in the late 90s. We had grunge. 
So it was really the decade, you could argue, where metal kind of started to reach out or, or other genres started to reach uh, towards metal. There was a flirtation. There was a flirtation, indeed. You said it would be a sexy episode, and right? look at that. But what do we do that you mentioned new metal, which brings me to our friend Static X. Okay, Static X. We're going to see if there's any opinions out there about Static X. I think... There's a lot of opinions about Static <laughs> X in the chat, I'm All right. tell you. What's Sam Sutherland the camera confirms there's been a lot of chat about Static X. I mean, Static X's disco says <laughs> Dion R. Yeah, we had uh, Static X's evil disco. Okay. Uh, some people I know like are feeling that Static X is maybe about to get kind of shit on. <laughs> oh. And so like Soren Markov says, I think Static X is death industrial. Right. No one uh, thinks they're new metal. Like, I think they're new metal with eyeliner. No, I think no they're new metal, that. too. I mean, we don't want to bring Cold Chamber in the argument, but I will. Their song <laughs> Loco had kind of almost like an industrial vibe right, to it. Right. I think, again, in the 90s, a lot of these bands that were playing grooves were dabbling with industrial. So I'm going to move this off, too. I'm going to put on that side. Okay. Um, I don't think it deserves to be in this category with the benefit of uh, being 10 years later. What else is going on uh, on the boards, Sam? You got anything new for us out there? Well, we've got uh, a comment about Lisa's hair looking amazing, okay. uh, but that's not necessarily related to Static X. That's not very metal. Uh, <laughs> Sam's we, hair also looks amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jarms 6669, <laughs> which is an A+. plus. That's like my dream of a username. Jarms, uh, is that a new genre? That's like the cousin of Gent. It's like, yeah, it's like really <laughs> it's jazzy Gent. Uh, Static X, uh, gots to go away and go to new metal. Thank you. Eric, Eric a AU, which is yeah. Airy AU. Yeah. Uh, Static X is new metal. Good, we got uh, some consensus. Yeah, a lot of people. Oh, uh, Jonathan does compliment your hair also, Sam. So Sam's I'm, I'm hair is pleased beautiful. that it's Jonathan, mostly, complimenting me. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Ollie Ray, Static X's industrial metal dummy. I don't know if Ollie is referring to people <laughs> in the chat or you two. Uh, okay, I can take it, I can take I, it. My impression is that people are sort of split in terms of where Static X goes. Okay, I think I, I'm, I'm gonna lay my foot down. I think they're new metal. I think at the time when we did this 10 years ago, you know, there was a lot of new metal. And so we looked at the bands that maybe had some other aspects right, right. going on. And so it was like, okay, there is an industrial element here, but I think now with the benefit of 10 years hindsight, at the end of the day, Static X was a new metal-ish band. I'm gonna tackle Maxime Olagnon's uh, claim about Nail Bomb. Uh, Max, I love Max, you guys know, he's one of my faves. And I've thought about this. Personally, I feel they were way too guitar driven way too thrashy, not robotic or mechanistic enough to belong. So, sorry, Maxime, and anyone else that thinks that Nail Bomb should be here, but I, 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 I can't agree. I'm going to defer to Sam, as I generally do. Well, in when it matters comes to thrash, I tend to have a few opinions. <laughs> sorry. But yes, Sam. I'm just saying, Quartham Venom thinks that Nail Bomb should be industrial thrash. There's so maybe no that's, industrial thrash. Maybe that's genre. like a thing that should be added. I don't, I don't know about know. that. I'd like to listen to some Quartham or Venom right now, <laughs> yeah. though. That's another uh, story altogether. <laughs> there is a point to be made, though, because I think, you know, we've seen some comments about strapping, especially. Yeah. That strapping is obviously a band who early on had a lot of industrial elements in their sound, but progressively moved away from that probably a lot more thrashy and a lot more atmospheric, the sort of Devin Townsend breathy vocals. But at the end of the day, I do think that they represent some evolution in this music. We have to remember that they all can't be ministry and they all can't be God. Why not? It's got to go somewhere. Why not? Uh, but much like Fear Factory, I think they were a band that kind of did bring thrash into the, into the sound, but still the robotic thing was still there. What occurs to me as we're talking about this, specifically about Static X and other things too, is this... We've talked about this before on Metal Evolution and other banger shows, is that the 90s were a very confusing time. For sure. For metal. And I would argue that industrial music is one of the only good forms of rock and metal mm -hmm. from the 90s. Yeah. So I, I feel pretty good about this compared to like what we're going to do with new metal eventually. And right? Swedish thrash, but don't get me started. <laughs> um, maybe we should talk about bands 
that should be added. No, we should talk about strapping young lads. Where do they go before we move on? Clearly, because we are not done with strapping. No, no, no. So, uh, Zyman Trespali... Tres Palacios. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, you've more traveled than I am. Uh, I'll start out by saying that strapping ain't industrial. Yeah, okay. Uh, bum biscuits, should strapping really be in there? And there's sort of, I think, doubt about you know, whether the band sort of continues, I think, to have that yeah, sound. Yeah. Uh, and then several people, including Tim Robin and Shark Crusher 13, have suggesting that uh, Devin himself probably just needs his own part of the train. Well, here's a good point. You know, uh, you know I, I, I think that Devin has clearly made a lot of innovative music. But before we move them out, I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you guys out there. If, you, if they don't belong here, do they belong somewhere else more fittingly? I would make the argument that they belong best in industrial. So or unless... are they one of the bands that we know don't belong anywhere okay, else? We okay. don't have well, a Devin Townsend branch. This is my favorite genre, everyone. <laughs> So I'm what, gonna do this because the reason Nin is not on here is because it's not I'm metal. I'm going to reluctantly, and perhaps temporarily, <laughs> move Strapping Young Lad into the uh, almighty question mark subgenre. I think there's enough debate to warrant that. Uh, but I, I, I encourage everyone to try and think about, well, where do they belong? Do they belong in another genre on the chart? Uh, do we need a new genre on the chart? The Devon Townsend subgenre. Uh, perhaps there's some merit to Can that. Can we talk about the bands that are missing? Yes, let's okay. talk about the bands that are missing. Because uh, I don't know exactly what's going on in the chat, but I came prepared to fight for the addition of KMFDM. Okay, and on and what's what's your what's your argument there, Lisa? Well, to me, they're pretty much on the same level as Ministry in terms of defining the sound of this music, okay. the music, the image the lyrics, oh, yeah. everything about it. Right. Uh, they are a quintessential industrial band to me, and they're more metal than they are rock or okay. electronic, and clearly, in, my, in my view. We need to move them up close to the top because it's obviously a band that's been around for a long time. Yeah, and they've influenced a lot of other bands okay. in their wake. So well, we'll let that one sit. Let's see, Patrick Toe is saying, KMFDM probably deserve consideration. I'm not right. intimately familiar right. with all of their music, but I'd say their sound is pretty much right at the point where industrial meets metal. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, hold on, someone keeps, I, I missed the original comment, but R. Goosen says, please respond on KMFDM <laughs> Berserker. What is the deal with KMFDM's Berserker that like he needs a response on? I don't know is if I can familiar answer. With, I, is there a controversy around Berserker? I'm not it, aware of the controversy. So if anyone out there <laughs> in TV land can respond to Gra Patero Espana, <laughs> oh no, wrong guy that yeah. about this berserker <laughs> question um, chime in because we don't know but clearly. everyone it's everyone been a while agrees on KM, kmfdm that. worship the pizza gram strongly agree with kmfdm i think everyone here can agree on that you are right worship the pizza gram 100 percent riley rowe yes kmfdm Corthan okay. venom yes kmfdm yeah Eddie good, Tantum, good, good. KMFDM. Good. That's a win for me. Okay, I'm what ringing about the MDFMK. Is I'm ringing the bell MDFMK? myself. <laughs> Sam, can I have a bell ring? Any other bands, Double I, that you feel belong here? Uh, I actually am going to make a bold move. Uh oh. And suggest Killing Joke. Okay. And why is that a bold move? Because they are not well known as an industrial band. They're known as like pioneers of uh, really. Post punk, yep, if yep, anything. Yep. But I think they have become more and more of an industrial metal band over the years. Okay, okay. And they are, in fact, influential and have influenced other metal bands. Okay, well, it just so happened that we have a magnet. <laughs> look how that. I happened. work here, so look how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put them up near the top because obviously, Kaling Joke, bit of, a, I, I would bit like of a legacy to hear band. What, I would like to hear what other people think about that. Any opinions out yeah. there coming in? Killing Joke, yes, says Thrash Maniac 99. Uh, Soren Markov says Killing Joke isn't metal at all. It's okay. Have you listened to the newer records? I think, I mean, their big hits are not metal, but yeah. I think they've, they've come over. They've crossed over. There you go. Yeah. Killing Joke, yes, says Voracious Thank Souls. You. That's a Death Angel Thank shout out. Uh, Voracious Souls 95. Thank you for that. Any other opinions coming up on Killing Joke? People support Killing Joke, with Yay. the exception of, yeah. Uh, oh, Dion R says Killing Joke is punk. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. uh, yeah. but they evolved. I believe that's a two win for Lisa so far. Yeah, on this episode of Locked Horse. <laughs> These are difficult bands. So the bands that clearly <laughs> These go... are not all my friends, by the way. I didn't like 
just make them. These are difficult <laughs> bands that have an evolution through their career. For obviously, sure. like strapping. I think yeah. that's a lot of the reason why strapping is coming up because yeah. I think there's pretty good consensus on their first couple records, but then clearly. Devon's evolved the band's sound uh, quite dramatically over years, so that that that's fair. Any other bands out there, Sam, that are coming up that uh, we should consider I, adding? I think we have to talk about uh, Skinny Puppy. Skinny Puppy. Or as okay. I've written them in the notes that I'm feeding to you guys, Skinny P, which I'm sure they don't like to be referred to I'm as. pretty sure no one has ever referred to them as Skinny So, P. Josh Weinberg, uh, Skinny Puppy, was great plus representing Canada, BC in particular. No arguments from me there, being a West Coaster. Thank you, Josh Weinberg. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, I see uh, Garapatero, España, Skinny Puppy are the pioneer in this genre. Respect. Yeah. There's okay, honestly so, been too much. Uh, yeah, Riley Rose, Skinny Puppy, and Prong. So this is a tricky one. I'm going to hold on to this because I love them, and I just want to touch their logo for as long as possible before we give it away. Without this band... Ministry would not be an industrial metal band. Okay. Like, there's no question in my mind. And why? And can you give us a little description on that? Why? Well, I mean, Al started working with Skinny Puppy yeah. and they influenced each other. And certainly the Rabies album, which came out around the same time that Ministry went metal, mm -hmm. was also highly influential. Yeah. But like Nin, I just can't call them a metal band. Mm. Like ultimately, I need, okay. to, I need to put them as the quintessential, most important industrial band ever, okay. but they're not metal. Okay. That's what I think. That's bold. And is that basically, does, does that come down to our great guitar dividing line in the sand that you don't think the sound is guitar good yeah, enough for sure. to, to, to classify? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sure you're going to get some responses. Riley Rowe says Skinny Puppy's image was huge on right. the genre. Super influential, right. not metal. Fair enough. Yeah. Needs more prong, or no, before we get there, Grey Matter, yes, Skinny Puppy is a big influence on the genre right. as a whole, higher than Killing Joke. So, some support coming in for Skinny Puppy. Um, yeah. Maybe we need to write in some, those were, so those were my picks. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you all agree, thank you so much. Okay. But I know that there are a lot more bands that we haven't talked about yet. So. Yeah, there's some bands that have come in uh, that I've got here. We've caught, talked about KMFDM, we've talked about Nail Bomb. Jordan As, A-S, says Die Krups. They influenced True. Rammstein and Fear Factory. Are they an industrial metal band, though? Yeah, but I think negligible. Okay. Like, I think, like, their influence has not really continued. Right, so, right. Yeah, I'd I mean, hard-pressed. Because, I mean, you know, someone we haven't talked about, people wanted to shout out Skinny Puppy for being Canadian. Yeah. And we have a band from Toronto called Mal Havoc mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was doing ministry before ministry. Right. So right. a lot of people were doing this that influenced these bands, but, again, like, their influence has not continued over the years, and they're sort of a little too, maybe, underground, a little too cult for me to put them on the official tree. Okay. Know? There's been some newer bands coming in. Uh, Ryan Graham, Susie Luttrell, Hawk, Dan Burton, Joe Dudley McCoy <laughs> all advocated for Author and Punisher. I don't know this band. Please explain. I want to thank the people commenting uh, on this episode for introducing me to Author and Punisher. Okay. And I think they absolutely need to be on all the right. chart. Well, we got the... So for me, what I like about this band, there's a ton of like new industrial bands that are doing very electronic dance music that I don't think qualify to be on a metal chart, even if they play metal festivals and somehow sometimes have metal songs. Yeah. This to me is like a guy who is doing Godflesh for 2015, okay. right? He's taking yeah. what's most interesting about metal right now to me, which is the Doom drone revival. Yeah, cool. And meshing it, doing it with electronics. So I'm 100% behind author and Well, that's it. interesting because we talked earlier about, you know, is this a genre that's still evolving yeah, now yeah. or is it sort of a product of the 90s and is static? Right? But it's seeming to suggest that maybe there's some, there's some new blood out there. Yeah, he's great. Cool. Um, one more here. We got Oliver Grunseis, pardon the pronunciation, Alan Hall, Julian Silva, and Kevin Spenz have all advocated for pitch shifter. Yeah, sure. What do you think about that? I think they belong on the chart. They're not probably, a new band. They no. belong sort of up here, yeah. but important. Another 90s band yeah. where a lot of bands were dabbling with that yeah. sound. Oh, we've got a beautiful magnet. Hey, who, who guessed? These guys should probably be up here yeah. somewhere-ish. Yeah. Static X just keeps on getting <laughs> bumped further down the board, people. I'll just stand in front of it. <laughs> 
I didn't throw them on the ground, but close. No, you didn't. Close. Um, any other bands coming in from uh, the chat? Sam? We got a few. I think we really need to address uh, Marilyn Manson. Oh. Because there's a lot of opinions. I think, if anything, people just want to have you agree why Manson does not belong here. Well, but, Manson is on the shock rock subgenre, mm -hmm. on the family tree, clearly yeah. belongs there with Kiss, Alice Cooper, and in fact, if we don't have them, they should be, Ramstein should be there yeah. as well, but that's shock rock. Exactly. Like, What's your opinion? To me, Marilyn Manson is a straight up 100% rock and roll band. Yeah. And it came out at a time when electronic and Industrial yep. music was popular and so adopted that sound. Yep. Influential, absolutely, for yep. sure. Like I saw someone mention Motionless in White. Mm -hmm. Like that is the evolution of Manson. Right, right. But it's not metal. And I don't think it's very industrial. I, I think would it's a straight up rock band. I would agree with you there. I think coming down to that guitar criteria, I don't think that Marilyn's sound ultimately has a sort of guitar I don't know about that. Sound. I think it does. I think it has more metal. It doesn't have the industrial element. Is that the first time we've disagreed today? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not the first time ever. We do have our first instance, and I don't think we need to discuss this, of someone suggesting Power Man 5000. Uh, uh, you know what? They had their 15 minutes of fame. Let's just move next, on. But next. But you would be you would be surprised with the traction that Motionless in White had, at least with a few people. Ollie Ray is like straight up ride or die, Motionless right. in White. He said it a lot, right. uh, which has led to some discussion, as you can see, Eddie Tantum. Okay. Uh, I think directing his comments specifically at I'm Ollie confused. Ray. I'm confused by them. I saw them. We yep. were at a heavy MTL yep. this yep. summer, and I, I went to see Motionless in yep. White because yep. I saw them walking around the lunchroom, and I was like, "Who are all the goth dudes? Like, what's going on?" <laughs> so, and I was like, "Oh, they're a metal band, but more of a metalcore band with like bad like emo vocals." Like, Ooh. I have a hard time putting them as an industrial band. Okay. Okay, some yeah. debate there. Some what do we what do we got? Yeah. Thrash Maniac ninety nine motionless white thoughts. Put motionless and white on industrial metal charts. Says Ollie Ray. Yeah, but Eddie says, dude, they're terrible metalcore. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Not, not yeah. going to agree with disagree with that. Yeah. Soren Markov yeah. motionless and white is garbage. Oh, that's me. Oh. They're not garbage. Oh. It sort of it goes on. Yeah. They're not, garbage. They're not getting. They're just on. not industrial metal. I know. That's what I think. Something that hasn't come up here, Lisa, that we've talked about before, is this thing called. NDH. Right. Can you describe what this is? I can. Is anyone talking about like Oomph and like the other sort of German bands? Yeah, I haven't grabbed any, any yeah. usernames for it, so my apologies, but there are definitely some people. Oomph has come up. Someone referred, right. someone used whatever NDH is. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Rammstein is part of an entire, of its own subgenre. Right. Okay. Called NDH, which in German is New German Hardness, right. I think, or yep. Hardcore, something like yep. that. And there's a whole bunch of bands that sound like. Ramstein and right. derivations thereof. I don't know that much about it because it hasn't filtered over here. Yeah, right. So it's hard for me to say whether I think it's, it's metal or European not. Things, you know, if people uh, want to argue for that, I'm, right. I'm happy to listen. But well, if I anyone mean, out there has an, has an opinion about those German bands, we'd like to know yeah. because so far we've actually only added one new band to the chart. Right. right? What, what does that say about industrial metal? Though? I guess we've added right? these ones which are, let me stand, let me correct that, we've added some older bands. Yeah. We haven't really added a lot of uh, younger bands yet. So curious to know out there. Yeah, like what feel. are the bands from like the last 10 years? Like I don't care about filter. Like let's, let's bring it up to the present day, right? You would be amazed how many people have opinions about filter though, which <laughs> I had no idea, but we had yeah. Painter Lava Lamp, filter! Thrash Maniac 99, what about filter? Sure. Jerome Faria, Filter. Our because goosey. apparently Filter fans are very succinct, which I respect. <laughs> well, uh, also, Filter was a gateway because they had a hit. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people discovered this music because of that band, and so it's an important band for them. So what do you think, though? Do they deserve here? Do you know their catalog? I don't know their catalog. Yeah, sure. I mean, they're pretty much straight up industrial rock metal. Right, But right. again, their influence has not extended beyond the 90s. I don't think they influenced other metal bands. Like. This is a tight, this is, this. it's hard to get through the Lisa Latissur <laughs> filter <laughs> oh. uh, on this episode. But I want to uh, hear about new bands. I, I want to hear new bands. Are we, I mean, no prong's not, you know, but prong has come up a lot. Why? Like, We're so stuck in the 90s I'm going to weigh in on prong because they're a band that I grew up with and I know fairly well. To me, they're not an industrial hmm. metal band. Again, Are they groove metal band? for me, it's about, it's got to have that robotic, yeah. mechanistic sound that all of these bands share. It doesn't have to be a right, drum machine, right. but the drummer 
in the case of like Fear Factory, and I, I would argue Strapping Young Lad, it's about trying to recreate the sound of a machine. That's what it, that's part of the core of this music to me. To me, Prong, I'm sorry, Ron Green, Metal God 38, and everyone else that now officially hates me, yeah, yeah. but I don't think that Prong belongs in industrial metal. They're more what we've called on the chart, which I agree is clumsy hard alternative, kind of a more of a groove element going on there. To me, what's interesting about this, it's really hard to get up to present day mm -hmm. because industrial's influence in the 90s was so strong. We're just going to keep talking about those bands that were important back then. It's hard to see how it continues in, in 2015. And maybe that's because we now live in the dystopian era that we were worried yeah. about back then. Yeah. And so we don't want to Well, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, know. the last couple episodes we've done on Metalcore and Doom, there was a lot of new bands yeah. added. I yeah. think... Maybe we're on maybe we're on the cusp of something new. You know, maybe these NDR bands from from NDH. NDH shows how much I know. <laughs> NDH from Germany bands are going to create something new and, and we've yet to see sort of the spawn of Ramstein. But like even the chat, like I'm seeing again a lot, like someone mentioned Frontline Assembly and yeah. Prong and stuff. It's like who, are, who are the new bands, right? These are older bands. So I mean maybe yeah. it begs the larger larger question, like, is this a closed is industrial metal a moment in time, or is it actually something that continues to evolve? I mean, new wave of British heavy metal, we could argue, yeah. you know, it was a period in metal history that had its moment, and then other things happened. Maybe this is the same with industrial metal. I would actually say that that's pretty accurate. Yeah. You know, that it was a time and a place in metal music, let's yep. say, where this flirtation was happening. Sure. Between electronics and... Yeah. Metal. Well, we could revisit in five yeah. years and we may eat our words <laughs> because Germany has taken over uh, North true. America with a new sound. Sam, anything else from Internet Land? So I feel like we would, he's written it so many, he or she has written it so many times. Epic 495 like really wants to talk about Mushroom Head. Okay. Uh, and Shining and Death Stars, but they've written the word Mushroom Head like dozens of times. Okay. Uh, and I, I, you know, I'd be curious to know what you guys think about that. I actually have no opinion on I, that. So. You know what, just for uh, determination, and the power of repetition, which of course is very industrial. I'm gonna write Mushroom Head. And I'm not even gonna fit it all on this card, but I'll try and get it on there. Yeah, I don't know that much about these guys. But you know what? Yeah. That's not some message to everyone out there that just you say the same band enough times you're gonna get on here. It's not that easy, but uh, I do respect persistence. So, um, I think we're done, Sam, or are I think we, we're seeing a we lot of satisfied. We're, we're seeing a lot of like, I think agreement, which okay. is weird. Right. And then we're not finding those new bands. I think to what you guys were right. saying, like we're seeing a lot of, you know, the prong front line, that kind of thing where, you know, these are, you know, great bands, but you know, where do they, you know, the sign is that we should wrap up. Someone said, where is ACDC? <laughs> it's officially over <laughs> here, people. Uh, thank you to everyone for participating. Thank you, Lisa for bringing your, your expertise to the show. Thank you, Daniel, Sam, Lana, Andrew, everyone off camera for helping to make this happen. Um, reminder, this show will be archived shortly. You can watch it at Banger TV, our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and help us build this into a full channel. Next week, Math Core. This is gonna get complicated. Slash post hardcore, as if math core wasn't enough. There's been an explosion of bands playing this extremely complex, proggy kind of metal, and Mr. Sam Sutherland, who's off camera, is gonna step in front of the camera and teach me everything there is to know about math core. And I'm oh. gonna ring the bell when he starts talking. Yeah, and I'm gonna bring my abacus. So, <laughs> Thursday, November 26th, 2 p.m. Eastern, Join us again on Lockhorns. See you next time.